Hello, my friends, and welcome to this evening's Danny Buckler Show. How are you? People are going to start coming in any second now. I'm going to get a cheeky snip of my team. Here we go. Hey, Megan, first in every time. You can set your clock by her. Mm. Nice to see you. Hello there. Hello, Bouchard Photo. Nice to see you. Katie Skipton. Always nice to see you. Frank's here. Steve Price, the iPad magician. I love the code. It's like superhero names. The iPad magician. Who is he? We keep his identity a close secret. Hey, Andy, how are you? Steve Price, nice to see you as well. Come on, everybody. Slight bar bar, we've been watched by a venue. Today, we've got a great guest here tonight, my friends. A man who needs no introduction. Coming up as soon as I see him in the... Uh... Hey, Frank, as soon as I see him in the chat, just while I'm waiting for him. Um, I had a bit of banter, I suppose, while we're waiting. Hey, Black Sheep Royale. Um, yeah, it's going to be a good one tonight. I've got some, some questions have flooded in. So we've got some stuff to talk about. And, um, yeah, let's just wait for him to show up. <laughs> There's always this bit when you're doing one of these with a guest where your heart's in your throat because you're thinking, are they going to come? <laughs> because, you know what I mean? You don't know what's, what's, uh, what's going on. How's everyone's week been? How's your, how are you doing? How are you feeling after the news today about the, what's happening with the lockdown and everything? The end's in sight, isn't it? It feels like it anyway. I'm still living one day at a time. I'm not going to project forward. But, you know, it was quite a nice day to hear about, you know, vaccines and just a date, just an idea that there's an end point, you know, gave me a bit of a lift. Obviously, show business still getting the shaft, you know, hence this. So uh, if you want to support this ministry, if you feel like supporting this show, but this is free and it's always, I don't want any money off you. But if you do feel like saving an endangered species, i.e. me, you can buy us a coffee from the link in my profile when the show is done, um, which will be in about an hour's time. The show will start as soon as our guest arrives. It's always so awkward, this bit. I'm watching the... Uh... Ah, Curtis, how are you? Nice to see you. Megan, I'm so sad. I'm sorry to hear that. I was meant to go to America for three weeks and um, it's been rescheduled for next year. Oh, it, so it will happen then. That's good news. It will happen, Megan. Just have to wait another year, that's all. But you'll get there. Oh, here he is. Fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, what can I tell you about tonight's guest? Apart from the, the fact he needs to get himself a watch for Christmas. He's a legend of a man. I've known him for years. One of my favourite people. Um, a joy of a man. You already know who he is, most of you, I'm sure. But please, as I open up a portal, would you welcome to the Danny Buckler Instagram live stream. Incredible. John Archer, everybody. Boom. Boom, boom. There you go. This is why I'm late. I was pouring myself a whiskey. Oh, nice. There you go. I've had worse excuses. I know, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to turn you up a bit. You're not very loud. Am I not? No, you are now. It was my volume. And we're both, I can see, that you, you met on Friday's stream, uh, John, I, the guest turned up like you did on everybody's screen apart from mine. <laughs> so I was sort of, I was drawing away going like, where is he? Where's he gone? You watch it back on the thing, and he's down the box, and then he's going like, "I'm right here, mate. What's the crack?" Yeah, no. Well, I'm. I'm I can see you. I've just rushed off off from uh, watching. I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. How, how are you finding it this year? The I'm a celebrity. Yeah. Quite like. I quite like the change. It's all right, isn't it? That's what I've heard. People are saying they actually prefer it. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't know whether I prefer it. It's certainly, it's certainly nice for a change. But you know, they're, they seem like a nice bunch. So. I would be pissed off if it was my year to do it. That's all I can tell you. I know. Well, it's the same with Britain's Got Talent, isn't it? It's like, you know, you, you finally get on and they, they, it's like no audience. It, all the programmes that you'd want to be on this year, well, you might not want to be on, but you know what I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. How are you? I love your background. Oh, thank you, mate. This is my, it changes every day. I've got a, a selection yeah, now of these. <laughs> yeah, they're always this, slightly different, aren't they? Yeah, this one's a universe. Uh, the Fibonacci cycle, yeah. So how have you been, mate? What have you been up to? Well, how are you keeping busy? Um, well, not a lot, really. Sort of, um, you know, just... Do you know what you sort of... You do a lot every day and think, I haven't done anything. It's a bit like that. I sort of go on my computer and, I, 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 you know, I look at a few websites and I, I, I play my ukulele a lot. I'm just, you know, just... I'm doing that more than magic. I sort of... I, I haven't really... You would have thought with lockdown, at, right at the beginning of lockdown, I thought, right, I'll write a book and I'll learn some new material. I'll write some. None of it happened. None of it happened. And sort of, but but I have um, I've enjoyed doing other stuff really. Just 
you know. I, I mean, really play people early and learn, and just learning stuff like how to use Photoshop and Lightroom, mm. different things. Just f wasting time, basically, for life to start again. Yes, yeah, what it feels like. It, I, I had this weird vision. Like when it started, I was going like, to, um, you know, be like, come out of it fit. Yeah. You know, that was the plan. I thought I'd be like Max Cady in Cape Fear and get yeah. shredded. And then cut like you know, and 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 then come out, and, and the reverse happened. I've actually because of like I've yeah. always gone on about it because I've, I've been got eating one of them. nothing, but I've been eating a lot. <laughs> well, it's funny because I I I I've lost quite a bit of weight, but um, I, I didn't at the beginning of lockdown. I put weight on, and then I sort of as lockdown came, the first lockdown came towards an end. I thought, right, I'm gonna you know stop eating, just eat, eat healthy and cut out sugars and carbs and stuff. And I joined the gym, and I was going. I'd been going to the gym for about ten weeks until this second lockdown started. So I was starting to, I was starting to feel good. I was enjoying that, just every day getting out. But of course, you know, I haven't been now for you know two weeks or three weeks or whatever it is. So I can't wait to get back into that again. But you're right. You sort of you know, it, 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 it's like New Year, isn't it? New Year's resolutions. You have all these plans of what you're going to do with lockdown or you know right an opportunity let's make the best of this moment oh, you know yeah. you know it's like the blitz we're all going down in the you know down on the tube stations and we'll sing we'll meet again and we'll make new friends and we'll be different people and the truth is we're going when is it going to be over <laughs> <laughs> did you get because you're, you're am i right in thinking you're midlands or up north no <laughs> north I'm, I'm sort of middlesbrough way northeast middlesbrough. Stockton on Tees. Because round here, it, the first lockdown, I had that feeling of it being like, like you go for a walk and it was like people were smiling at each other like it was Boxing Day. You were going, yeah, yeah. And it was all yeah, very... Um, to the, but just cross the road. <laughs> that going on, like, yeah. Whereas like lockdown two, it's definitely this. <laughs> yeah. Like a... Yeah, it is odd, isn't it? It's crazy. And then all of, all of a sudden, it was like, it was like, just like plummeting towards the floor and then suddenly a parachute opened. Uh, with the, with the news of the vaccine, and just it's oh, everybody yeah. just got a little bit more like, oh, we're still in the tunnel, but at least we finally someone's turned the light on that type of thing. So, and, and then you, happy uh, people said things like Easter, you know, we could restrictions could be off by Easter. Now, whether they will or not, we don't know, but just the that the fact that they're talking about that, you sort of ah, oh. it's the it's the idea. And there's that weird when they start talking like that, you get a feeling that things will conspire for it to happen. In do you know what I mean? It's like once they, once you have yeah. a definite, you know, when when you've got to write a show for a, a definite date, like an Edinburgh or a tour, yeah, it sort of comes together. But if you haven't got that definite date, it just seems to go on notebooks and sprawling. It feels yeah. like having an end date gives everything cohesion. Yeah, of course it does. It's just you know, it's just we, we like we like dates in diaries, don't we? We like appointments. We like to know where we are. It's like it's like when I'm normal life when you know before all of this happened. You know, a lot of my gigs were just you know working life was just you'd go from one gig to the next. But it was always nice to have little signposts, little targets, little things that you thought I'm looking forward to that. You know, and it might be a, a gig at a special little theater, or it might, it might be you know, a convention where, you know, you're going to meet up with some mates and, the, mm. you know, yeah, it was nice just to have these little, little flags. I mean, not that the rest of your life was dull. I love, you know, I love, love all that I do, but just these little things that were like, oh, that's a bit different. And I've, I've got that to look forward to. And it felt like all of that had gone, you know, it was just like there, there weren't, there weren't any little, you know, signposts. Little little pinpricks in the map that you could look at. There weren't any of them, uh, and and just having that thing of, and also old dates were getting moved back, but you never really knew if they were going to happen. It was like, oh well, that date's been moved from January to March, and you think, yeah, but it might get moved again. Whereas now you sort of feel like things things are getting solidified again. Mm. Is your tour back on for next year? Uh, yeah, I've only got about five six dates left of it. But then I'm touring with uh, Tim Byrne again. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, but we're doing... Uh, it's very different, this one. It's not really... I'm not doing any magic in it. And it's not really... A, it's sort of a musical comedy tour. I, I, have I told you about it before? No, not at all. This is all news. All right, so Tim is touring as a, as a character called Plastic Elvis. So he wears a PVC... <laughs> Sorry, I just... Goes by the <laughs> name... 
fantastic. Uh, has a full backing band of session musicians with him on tour with us. So there's, I think there's nine of us going on tour, whereas normally it's just three of us, me, Tim, and our tour manager, Jobbins. Uh, so there's going to be nine of us on tour, the full band. And I am opening for him as Big Buddy Holly. So I, uh, I, wear, I'm gonna, uh, but I wear like Buddy Holly glasses and a wig, and I, um, I've had a ukulele. I'll show you it. It's here. Let's have a look at it. Ukulele made to match Buddy Holly's ukulele, but this is a ukulele, it's just four strings. So, um, so I come on and sort of talk in a re very bad, um, sort of American accent, going, "Well, hi there. It's really great to be here, and I'm really excited to be smart and plastic." And then I sing about seven. Buddy Holly songs, you know, with a what, straight L or L yeah, but sort of slightly comedic. But I, I play yeah. the youth properly, and and it's all sort of <laughs> little things that you can say you do. <laughs> it's all <laughs> so um so yeah so so we're doing that, and we've got about twenty updates of that. Um, it's like you're combining the, Buddy the Holly and the Big Bopper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It is. It's exactly like their last tour. You know, I do finish off by saying, you know, um, I've got to go now. I've got a plane to catch, which always gets a grow. We, uh, <laughs> we, we did it at Edinburgh last year in the Spiegel tent, uh, which was like 500 people. It was sold out because obviously Tim's name's attached to it. Um, and we just had such a laugh. It was just so much fun. And it was, you know, it was very different. It is funny. I, I mean, I'm being a bit ridiculous between songs not necessarily gags but it's character based you know and which is mm. a challenge for me and and tim's the same he's doing funny stuff between the songs but when we do the songs they're actually reasonably you know you can listen to them they're reasonable musical stuff so that's i'm really excited about that which is why i think this year i've spent more time just hammering the ukulele trying to you know trying to get to a point where people won't walk out before they've heard plastic so that's exciting you and your ukulele were one of my top five theatrical moments of not last year, the year before, I think it was. Oh, when, nice. when, me, when me and Furman came to see you um, with Tim. Oh, yeah. Was that, did I sing, was that when I sang Tonight You Belong to Me? Yes. Yeah, yeah, to the yeah. audience. Yeah. Genuinely, it was a genuinely brilliant, poignant, funny, lovely moment, that. Yeah, yeah. No, I really like that. I, I've always tried to finish with... Um, I nearly always, normally in my normal act, I, I just do yeah. silly, as you know, I just do silly one and two line songs. Um, but I've always tried, I, I, I'm, I'm a bit old school, which I'm not embarrassed about at all. I, I like old school. But I'm Absolutely. a bit, I, I like the idea of a, of a comedian singing with a song and that sort of tears of a clown and that pathos thing of, you know, um, I've been this idiot for you, but, but you know, th there is a, there is a soul here and you know and also just trying to be a little bit honest with the audience and saying look you know i'm doing it for this year with for you which can sound a bit corny but i genuinely feel it so i it, it doesn't to me it doesn't feel corny it feels like i'm just being honest with them and uh and i've done a few endings i've done um the, the most recent one I, I was doing was um smile um and it was really nice because throughout the whole act i sort of pick on a guy in the front of the audience who, and make out that he wasn't smiling. And at the end, I'd say, I'd like to sing a little song now. And it'd be, you know, the, the Charlie Chaplin tune. Mm. You know, but, um, Smile or your heart is breaking. Um, and that has the same sort of thing. It's poignant and it's sweet. And hopefully it takes the audience a bit by surprise because they think, oh, oh he can mm. actually hold a tune. I mean, I haven't got the best voice in the world, but I can get away with it. Well, uh, what's, the other thing that I find, it's, it's not weird, but because we know our magic works and, and, and the skill that's required to make it work, when you start playing the ukulele, the audience seems to go, oh, like, real skill. And I'm yeah. like going, are you aware that, that this is like the lead, like, I don't mean, is it, but you know that those things he did, <laughs> there was skill involved in that as well. <laughs> yeah, not a lot of skill in my stuff, to yeah, be honest. This is serious I'm not, skill I'm not Ben Earl, I can't do the Ben Earl stuff. Uh, <laughs> How about you, anyway? What, what's happening with the cruise thing? Is, is that looking like... Is there any, you know, light at the, well, the end of that? March. March. Mm. I mean, March. They keep pushing it back, pushing it back, pushing it. It's going to be March uh, at the well, earliest. OK. But then it's a question are you of... Starting um, to get, are you starting to get dates for that? Are they starting to say... Put no. These they're, they're not, because... Um, but what's happening is... Well, first of all, for, for cruising to start, the vaccine needs to be everywhere. Yeah. Um, that's the first thing. 
And then it's a question of how does cruising start? Is it going to be social distance? Does it not? Um, and then it's, um, you know, certain countries are going to be open. Certain countries aren't going to be, you know, I mean, basically we need America open is what we mm. really need. Yeah. Um, or what I need. Um, and then um, it's a question of do the cruise lines want to have guest entertainers? Yeah, I think they will. Prior, Pre-COVID, it was a necessity. But post-COVID, it might be thinking we've got to save money. We can't have people coming and going all the time. It might be, you know what I mean? It might be yeah. that you have to go on board and stay there for a, a bit. Yeah. And that affects yeah. If, I'm going, if I've got to be away for six months, then that's... And I, and I, although my, I barely got a career in the UK, I do have a small career in the UK that I would quite like to rekindle when the lights come back on. And um, so, yeah, so it's all up in the air. It's still all up in the air, but something could happen. Yeah, you know? no, it will. Something really will happen. I know what you mean, though, is that thing of, uh, you know, it's difficult to, to juggle those two things of being a cruise entertainer and having a, a presence in the UK and keeping that. It, it is a juggling act, isn't it? Mm. You know, and some people choose to try to do both and you can do both you see people who do I've both i've tried to do both i've tried yeah. to do both I, mean, I don't have to succeed I, I, you can do both but, but it takes um it takes discipline because you've got to you've got to say no to some things and leave those gaps haven't you whereas it's, saying so, no, it's so tempting leave, to fill your diary yeah leaving august august is like peak cruise time because all the ships are in the mediterranean yeah and i have to, and i leave it blank for edinburgh yeah and then the past two years, I've not actually gone to Edinburgh. I've left it blank and ended up not going. Blank. You just left it blank completely. Yeah, you just left it blank. Just that's the... Oh, yeah, it's blank for Edinburgh. Are you going? No. But um, <laughs> I have this... I've, I've been working. That's one thing I have been doing is working, getting together with an Edinburgh show for next year. Because yeah. um, it, a ship finance is permitting because obviously there's that as well. Yeah. But, um, yeah, if I can, I'd like to do Edinburgh again. But what's that going to look like? That's not going to be what it was. They've already said that it's going to be half the size, and yeah, you know, the, unfortunately, the venues that are most likely to stay shut are the venues that I do because I play small rooms. So, you know, I'm yeah. not filling the ground that, the ballroom of the. They're all, they're all guessing, though, Danny. Still, they're all they're, you know they're all guessing, and you know who knows who knows what will happen. But it'll definitely it'll definitely happen next year. I think. Well, I said definitely. You know, um, I, I can't see why it shouldn't happen next year. No. Um, this vaccine news really makes me think. Oh, it could, you know, it could, def you know, definitely be. Yeah. And also, it doesn't, you know, everyone doesn't have to have the vaccine for 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 us to get back to normal. We just have to protect the NHS, which is all being said, and, and protect the vulnerable. And once once we know that, you know, both of those things are covered, then, you know, just the same as lots of other things that we've got going on, we can hopefully get back and do something. Um, mm. uh, we're supposed to be doing a few. We were supposed to be doing a few dates at Edinburgh with a plastic Elvis thing. So you'll have to come and see us if we do. Oh, definitely, well, I will. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, I will. No, it's always one of the highlights. Wherever we are, go you along and yeah, watch me flail around in a bow tie and a velvet suit. They're great shows. I mean, I'm also yeah. Um, by the way, I, I, if I look down like that, I'm not ignoring you. I've got a questions box open. All right. I've, I've, I've got all the media here, mate. I've got my computer and I might be ignoring you. Yeah, so I've got, all, I've got all the tech going on here. I've got a phone and an iPod so I can answer questions and, you know. Uh, and next time I do this, I'll be doing it on Twitch as well to nobody. But there you go, you've got uh, to yeah. start. You know you? what? I haven't, I, I've given up trying to keep up with everything. I've, I've sort of, I've not got involved with Twitch. I mean, I haven't been on Instagram that long. I don't, I'm hopeless for constantly posting things. I, I'm, I'm a bit... I almost post out of duty. I think I should really post something. For the, I owe these people who follow me something, and it's a, a ridiculously bad picture of me in a set of Christmas lights. Or you know, I'm not. I'm not great at all this social I'm media. Not. You know, there, there are some people who do it well, but uh, so Twitch. Well, I, haven't, I haven't got a clue about Twitch. No, I'm, I'm learning. I've just set it up this weekend. All zero, right. zero followers, but yeah. um, but um. It's the same. It's the story of my life, though. I join MySpace. Everyone goes off to Facebook, so I go across. The, yeah. I go to go across to Facebook. Everyone leaves and goes to Instagram. I finally get to Instagram. Everyone's buggered off to Twitch. It's like I'm, click, I'm constantly <laughs> chasing. Them. And then I look at like people like Daniel Madison and Luke Jamay and their Instagrams. It's all black and white photographs looking off in the middle distance. Cool little slogans oh, no. like I'm, 
I'm working on becoming invisible all the time. We're not working very hard at it, mate. This is social media, but good luck. But you know what I mean? It's all that. It's all. And glasses of whiskey and all. Pondering, working. Yeah. Photographs of the black, black notebook ideas. You look at my Instagram and it's all. <laughs> it's kind of like, ah, here I am. Like, hey, hey. It's just, I'm not doing it professionally. <laughs> Every yeah, second it, post it, is one of these. You know, it's just a mess. It's a mess. I can't make yeah. it work. I, I tried really hard when I first got on it to make it look cool. I can't. I know. But the, the thing is, you don't want to become that person, though, do you? I, mean, I don't mean that in a negative way I'm, I, about the people who, who are good at it. But what I mean is, I don't really want to be somebody whose whole life is spent tweeting. And yeah, I do. I, I, I tweet. I probably tweet more than I do anything else. And Facebook, I do re quite regularly. But really, what I want to—I want to put my energy into stuff that I love, which is performing and traveling and having a laugh, and you know, just just what I used to do before lockdown. And uh, you know, you see, you see some people sort of get involved in say magic, and then suddenly they become dealers, magic dealers. And I mean, some people love to be magic dealers, but you see, other people become magic dealers. And all of a sudden, everything that they got in the magic four is gone because they become a business person. Now, for some people, they want to be a business person, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not, I'm not criticizing them for that. But my hundred percent, I want to stand in front of an audience and and you know be silly and get laughs and try and make people happy, and that's what makes me happy. It, 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 you know, it's a, it's a bit, it, it's not altruistic. It's a bit selfish that I feed my ego with that. I agree, but. You know, if you're not careful, you end up becoming, you end up doing things that you don't want to do just because you feel you have to do them, and you're not the person you wanted to be, and you're not doing what you want to do. So, so I don't worry too much about you know the Twitter. If I'm bad at it, I'm bad at it. So what? Absolutely, that that thing about the joy in magic as well, because I I've noticed that as a, as a, as a trend, the sort of um the the joy yeah the joy's the, the joy's gone out of it. It's an all, at least it has on social media as far as I can tell. Yeah, and, and I, I mean, I love watching the sleight of hand artists on. I really do actually love watching the sleight of hand artists doing these. They do like one move, and it's a, this flawless yeah. thing. Yeah. And I love watch. I love watching it. But I also used to love watching like Goshman having the doing doing sleight of hand, but having a crack, having the laugh. I used to yeah. like, you know, the, and the performers that I like watching like that. You don't get them so much on the social media. You don't. You have to sort of. Yeah. Do a deep dive on YouTube. Uh, Bob Reed. I was just thinking about Bob Reed again, you know, because somebody on the Circle Facebook put the video of his walk. I just remember watching Bob Reed perform and just the sheer joy and madness of it. And there's loads of people like that. And there's, there's loads of people you watch performing. Um, and you can see that they're having a good time, you know. you know, And, oh. and that's what, really, you want people who are having a good time. I don't care if they're big names or stars, so long as they look like they're having fun on stage. Uh, I'm happy, really. Absolutely. And I love, one of my favourite things is, is um, that little twinge of jealousy when you see somebody do something funny that you wish you thought of. Oh, yeah. I love that feeling. That little bit, oh, oh, that's nice. I wish I'd thought of that. Oh, I like, wish I'd with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, what was the last time? I think it was um, a Nick DeFarty. Um, Nick DeFarty. Nick DeFarty. I, I always get his name wrong. Um, hopefully he's not watching. But um, he, he, I think it's his gag. Um, if, if it's not, I apologise to whoever it is, and I apologise to him. But doing that thing where, in, in fact, I don't want to give it away. I don't. I don't want to give it away on here because some swine will pinch it. Um, but it was a lovely. It was a lovely little um, little moment with a spectator. Um, I'll tell you later, Danny. But <laughs> sorry to tease the audience. But it, just, right. it was. It was just a beautiful. It was like that's so clever um, and so funny. Uh, and immediately I thought, I want to do that. And I, can't, I know I can't. I know it's not mine. Mm. But just that thing of, ah, oh, wish. I so wish I'd come up with that. You know, <laughs> now and again, you know, and now and again, we come up with lines ourselves. You come up with lines where you go, oh, I'm really pleased with that. And people, you know, say they love those lines. But, yeah, when you see somebody else do it and you just go, that's so clever. And it suits who they are so well, you know. I had this weird thing on Facebook this week. I, I, a, a magician who I shall, I shall not name because this is a positive show, but yeah. he, he, just printed, he just posted a list of comedians' lines. Mm. It's a list. That was literally all chunk like that. There you go. Have, have these community. And they're yeah. working comedians. Tim was, in, Tim was in there. Yeah. Tim was in there. Gary Delaney was in there. Quite a few others. And um, 
and in the comments are all these magicians going, oh, I'll be using those. Yeah. And an another great haul. Thank you, mystery man. And um, I just thought, you're missing out on so much joy with this. This weird being a joke magpie. You really, you, know, you might think when, you know, unearned laughs are dead. They're not, you know, there's a difference between a laugh that's coming from something you've just had and something that you create. Do you know what I mean? There's a massive difference. You're missing on so much. But the thing is, Danny, I'm sure you're the same. We all start there. You know, we all... Mm. We're we nine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But when we, you know, when I started off, you know, I did loads of Tommy Cooper gags and, and, and bits of business and, and gags I'd heard. But suddenly you realise, you know, you have an epiphany, hopefully, um, and you, you think, right, I'm going to try and get rid of these. And you, you, you try some, and you write your own stuff. And all of a sudden, you get a laugh with something that's just come from you, from here, from here or here or wherever it's come from. And the, that moment is so much, like you say, it's just, it's real. It's, it's like, I've, you know, I, I'm, you're not a regurgitator, you're a creator. And it's a massive mm. difference to, to, to feel, you know, a response mm. that you've crafted. So, um, mm. yeah, the, I mean, they're robbing themselves in a way without realising yeah. it. You know, they're robbing themselves all of that opportunity and, uh, and joy. Like you get that, you get that the, the the moment of the joy of discovery. Then you get the joy of the first time you're going to do it. You don't know if it's going to work or not, and then you do it. And then the first time it works, you get that rush of oh, and then it's like yeah. you know, yeah, it's a wonderful. Oh. And sometimes you get the joy of realizing it's not going to work and ditching it. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a there's a weird joy. There's a weird pleasure in there's that. Way, I sometimes. Boy, I'm letting that go now. It never worked. Yeah. yeah. How many times have I written something and thought, here comes the thunder. <laughs> it's building up, building up, building up. And then you get on the, and I guess that means, ba 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 bum nothing. <laughs> like nothing. It was like, nothing. Oh, shit. I yeah. had a piece I put together for, um, it, was, it was a musical piece, so it was um, three minutes long with a backing track. So once it started, there was no getting off the bus. Do you know what I mean? There was no like, oh, this isn't working, let's change gears. It was a long bit. And the first time I did that, oh, my heart was in my throat. Like, if this dies, I've got three minutes. <laughs> and that's a long time on stage. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Before I can stop it. Do you know what I mean? It's like, once it starts, I can't stop it. Yeah. And thankfully it worked. But, oh, my God, that first time. But that, that's the nice thing about going on stage and, you know, when it's just your own act. It's like if you're in a, if you're in a show or a pantomime or something like that and there's a bit you don't like, and you can't ditch it because mm. the producer, the director says, no, no, we, we want that in. We like it. And you do it every time you're doing it. And, you, you know, and you never feel like it's getting what, what you want to get from it. But you mm. still go through it. That's, that's hard. When you can't, you can't work. That, that's why it's nice to have the power of uh, dropping something and that relief of, I don't have to do that anymore. I'm in charge. Mm. Yeah. That is a good feeling. I've had some questions come in, John. Throw them my way. I'll throw them back. Here's one. Here's a question from Mr. Andy you, Rowe. I, yeah, you look all sort of wonderful and tanned, and I look really. I should have adjusted my camera so I look real. I look like I'm, I'm about to die. Oh, anyway, no, carry I, don't, I don't trust me. I don't feel lovely and tanned. I feel like I feel like a man who's been living off mint arrows for six months. <laughs> uh, Andy Ray asks. Have either of you but you're, uh, ever performed magic in the round? And if yes, what did you do? Uh, I, uh, I have. Yes, I have. I'm trying. I'm trying to think where I know I have because I, I I remember the experience. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I just I just did I just did material that um, you know could be done and not you know, spotted from behind uh, and constantly turned round. I actually, I remember, I, I remember the one specific gig I did. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, it sounds like I'm uh, dropping big gigs here, but I did a gig in Nashville, uh, which is not as glamorous as it sounds, but it was for a, a music friend of mine. Um, and uh, it was for this, he's like a country gospel singer and he lives on a farm and every Labor Day weekend, he has a big, uh, 
party invites all of his fans and he has this bar and holds 500 people and uh, and they do they perform for two hours on the Saturday and Sunday night of Labour League week weekend um, and his tour manager is English and I knew him and worked with him before so he, he sort of as a way of getting me over there to see him he got this guy to book me uh, I've done it three times now and, and it's, it's one of those lovely lovely gigs where he flies my two boys over with me and we spend a week in Nashville and I work for two days but the, the first time, they changed it because I said I can't come back again as it was. But the first time was completely in the round, you know, 360 degrees. There wasn't even like a little partial area. Um, and, you know, I'd gone over there planning to do Magic Square and I thought, well, they won't, they won't be able to see. And I had to totally rethink what I was doing. But I think so long as you keep, you know, turning around and looking at everybody so nobody feels like you're ignoring them, you know, the worst thing you can do is just stay facing one way with the odd look. You, you've got to constantly. Uh, it was mm. all right. I think I'd choose to do because it's just, you want them all there, don't you, really? I mean, theatres weren't designed yeah. to look at the back of people. I mean, it's all right for a play where everybody's wandering off in different directions, but for a for a performer, you know, a visual act, really, you want, you know. We're, we're not circus, are we? I mean, circus get away with it, I suppose. Even then, cl clowns have routines that are designed to work 360. What about you? Have you you must have done it in the round at some point, have you? I have. I've done it only in, only in small venues, but I have done it. In, I did it at um, Guildford Fringe, one of my Guildford Fringe shows. Was oh, in the round. Yeah. I did it because I wanted to. Um, now, bear in mind that I'm. This show was more stand up. It was, this was a stand up show with magic in it, not a magic show. So right. It wasn't, it wasn't, so I, I don't know about doing it in the round for a full hour. That would be a bit much, I would imagine. But. Yeah, but um, but for the for the magic segment, I sort of realised when I was in there, going through it, that um, because all the magic I do is very small. Yeah. Mean, it plays. It feels a theatre. I mean, it plays big, oh. but but it's it's all small. It's small props, and they're pretty much, you know, they're all in my hat. There's no there's Dob no box it's or Dobson, isn't it? It's Dobson. It's like Dobson. Dobson always worked in a similar exactly way. Exactly that. But that's you where know, it came from. Stuff, but you know, yeah. A bit. Yeah. You know. So um. Any so any kind of work that was being done because there was palming in it and stuff like that, but it was all being done here. So if you're behind me, you're just seeing the back of me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And as I was sort of moving around to show people things, like things were being, it, it, it was surprisingly not as hard as I thought. The hard part wasn't concealing the methods. The hard part was the reveals. Yeah, yeah, exactly, it, exactly. It getting, getting the impact from the moment when the thing happened. That was the yeah. hard bit. The actual. Uh, um, concealing the methodology was um, not the hard bit. Yeah. By the way, if you ask, don't, don't very sorry to stop. If you want to ask a question in the comments, uh, you're, not, you're not being ignored. We're going to get. To, we'll, I'm, I'm trying to clock them, but we'll get to them. So don't don't be like. You know, it's just that I can't do three things at once. But and we're um, having a question. That as well. That as well. <laughs> so um, yeah. And I've had a question. Someone's just asked it in the comments, funnily enough, but someone else put it in earlier. This is from Lee Diamond Magic. So this is for him and whoever that guy was just now. Asking you, to, could you tell us how was the, uh, how was the Fullest experience with Penn and Teller? Um, Do you mind telling us about that? Or is that a story you've no, told too many times? And No, no, I, I, I've told it lots of times, but I mean, maybe not to these people. And if Lee's asked the question, he deserves an answer. So well, um, A lot of the people that follow me aren't magicians, John. So I'd say yeah, about yeah. a good 70% yeah. aren't. So, that, you know... Yeah, I mean, the, the Penn and Teller thing now has been going on in the USA. For, I think they're on to something like their eighth season or something. I, I don't know where they are. But the, the thing that made um, what when I did it different is it, it the show had never happened before. So it was mm. it was very much an unknown quantity of what is the show? What, what you know, we were all thinking, you know, because then Britain's Got Talent was a bit nasty to the axe. Uh, that has improved a lot now, but but Penn and Teller was uh, was new, and we think, are oh, they going to be like that? Are they going to be, you know, we, we show them a trick and they rip us apart and, and expose the whole thing? And the, of course, they were all promising that's not what it's about, but we all knew that Penn and Teller had a bit of a name for revealing stuff, and uh, so it was all a bit nerve wracking, but you know, it was telly, and you know, <laughs> and, you know it's hard to turn telly down no matter how, oh, how yeah. strong you are. I mean, some people are smart and do turn it down, but. So I agreed to it, but didn't have a clue what it was what it was going to be like. And um, and then, you know, a few people had gone out before me and not fooled them. And the talk, the general talk at the time was, 
I remember all the you know all the magicians in the UK were getting asked to do it, and everybody was emailing each other in little chat groups, sort of saying, "You can't fool Ped and Seller, you know." Especially Teller, he's very knowledgeable. He's you know he's written some good books and he's seen a lot of stuff, and you know he'll know all the moves. But the truth is that you know we we now learn that they can be fooled. You know we can all be fooled. You know, there's just, there's a million ways of doing things, and there's you know there's a million ways of doing one method. You know, in, so. Yeah, but they were lovely. They were, you know, the production team were lovely, and uh, and you know, I, I was tracked really well, and it it, it worked for me. And then the, the good thing was, of course, that uh, I was in the show with Ben Earl, and Ben fooled them as well. So hmm. me and Ben got to go to Vegas together. So I mean, you know, you you love Ben, I love Ben. He, you know, he's, so we had, we just had a great time out in Vegas, and we were there for a week. And because nobody had ever fooled them before. They wanted a camera crew to show, you know, what it was like going out to Vegas for when they did the series, because we were in the special. Um, mm. So we got, got spoilt rotten, really, with, you know, stretch limousines and helicopter rides. And, and Ben, of course, being the, uh, you know, anti-fame man that he is, was going, oh, I don't want to do all of this. And I was going, oh, I love it. And, you know, I was all <laughs> paper and he was all... I must confess, I'd, I'd have been all over that if I'd been out there. <laughs> So we're, we're a bit we're a bit like the odd couple uh, in in ways, but but yes, yeah, so I loved the whole experience from going on the show and, and fooling them to you know going out in Vegas and performing in their show at the Rio. I, I, you know, I loved it. No regrets at all. I'd go on again, but they probably they probably think I'm too old now. Uh, I'm sure but yeah, I'd agree. I mean, how old are they? Christ, they're pushing what seventy five. Teller is now. Yeah. No, I don't think Teller's 75, is he? He might, he might be around he's 70. Up, I, I think you'll be surprised. He's up there. He's in his 70s, I think. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I know I know. Um, Penn, Penn is uh, like mid to late 60s, I think, maybe. I, I don't know. I mean, the, you know, they dye the hair and do all sorts of things. If they can't work anything out, can you? When they take all the you know, pins the irony, in, the irony of him embracing that healthy lifestyle and instantly <laughs> looking about 40 years older has not been yeah. lost on me at all. I know. Yeah. I know he's Alfie now and he's going to live long, it, but Jesus, he looks back. He's fill out the wrinkles. That's what he did. I mean, you know. When, it first, when, it first, when he first dropped it and he had all that wattle and it was kind of before the, before the kind of skin, his face reformed. He was like, I'm much healthier than I've ever been. And I'm like, are you sure, mate? Because it looks a little bit like... Yeah. Oh, he's, he dropped that fast. How did it compare to Britain's Got Talent as an experience? Um... I mean, very different in in that um, the emphasis is different. I mean, the experience was very similar. I had a great time on Britain's Got Talent. They were very, very nice to me. Um, lovely production crew. Um, they promised that they would, you know, that they would not make me look bad, and they didn't. Now I, that I know that doesn't work out for everybody. It, it's a bit of a lottery still, mm. but yeah, they were really nice to me. Really lovely, and. Um, but the emphasis was different because obviously on, on Foolers, it was all about uh, fooling them. Uh, and Britain's Got Talent, it's not about fooling them at all, really. I mean, some, a lot of magicians go on there and fool them. For me, it wasn't about fooling anybody, really. I, you know, I wanted to do a good, strong trick. But for me, um, I think the same as it would be for you and uh, people like Williamson. You know, we have that attitude. The most important thing we want to do is get laughs. Um, mm. and And the trick... The trick is secondary but for me, like I say, for, yeah. not for everybody, but for, I, I, I think you'd probably say the same thing. I know I've chatted to uh, David Williamson about it, and he said the same thing. You know, he would he would happily drop drop the end of a trick if he thought he could get a laugh. Um, mm. And uh, and I sort of feel in, in some ways the same way. If I, you know, uh, I, I don't. If a trick goes wrong, I don't worry. I'll just try and get more laughs out of the fact that it's gone wrong. And and. Uh, so yeah, the emphasis was different. I, f I felt less. Uh, my nerves were for a different reason. I, you know, Penn and Teller Foolers, My nerves were. I was doing that trick, and I, I didn't dare look at Penn and Teller for the first maybe three minutes of that routine. If you watch me, I'm looking out at the audience, and then it's only when I start to relax a bit, I decide to look at them. And I remember looking, and and Penn was sort of sat back in his chair laughing. And Teller was sort of leaning forward, staring at my hands. And, mm. and I thought, oh, my word. You know, and I didn't look at them again, really, until the end. I just, But, uh, we're, we're, you know, with 
with Britain's Got Talent, I, I just wanted them. I just wanted to make them laugh, really, and, and you know, entertain them. Uh, but but in a lot of ways, very very similar. You know, TV talent shows are TV talent shows. You sort of, you know, the, you're not likely to make a big career for yourself out of it. You know, even the ones that win it these days don't last a long time. So it's more about having a good time, getting a nice clip, and then you come off it and you're famous for a, a month or two, and then you get back on with your life. Mm. Um, you know, a lot of, I mean, people talk about it, which shows that it must have, it must have done something. You know, it's... Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I did, a, I, I've done very few gigs this year, obviously, but I went and did a wedding for 15 people um, when only 15 were allowed for a wedding. Um, and I arrived at the venue, and of course, it's all social distance and masks, and but everybody was asking me about Britain's Got Talent. And I'd forgotten about it. I, I gen genuinely um, it wasn't even in my in my head when I got there. And I got there and they were all saying, oh, you did great on Britain's Got Talent. What was it? And I suddenly thought, oh, it obviously is a thing to other people. You know, that that that's that's how they know me. So it does, it does change. It does change your performing life a little bit. You might not get bigger gigs or better gigs, but you, the the reaction you get, the respect you get when you turn up is different. It's a bit like you know when when a when an act's a big name and they go and do a theatre tour and everybody turns up. He doesn't have to, he doesn't have to walk out and win them over. And I find yeah. a little bit, not with every gig, but with with a lot of gigs now, uh, it's just a little bit easier to start. I haven't got to try and mm. I haven't got to try try and quite so hard to earn the respect from the audience it's almost like you've got a little bit already you've, you've got a little bit in the bank you can still die but um it certainly helps mm. that's the one thing about um becoming becoming famous yeah I, 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 is that i would still and I, I would still like i mean I, I'm, I'm over that you know it's, it's, but but um it's that ability to be able to do an hour's show and then come back next year and do an hour's show and start from where you left off. Yeah, yeah. Having, that was the mistake I made at Edinburgh Festival. I assumed that the people coming back to see my last Edinburgh show had, had seen the previous two, and they hadn't. Not no. one of them. The ones who saw so the previous two thought, we'll never go to him again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly this. So I, I was like, I, I, like a week at the bar, sorry, why is this dying? And I suddenly realized, oh, it's because I'm, I'm assuming that they've seen the other two and they haven't. <laughs> I've still got to come out, set it up, Tell him who I am. Explain the thing. I've still got to do a bit of where I'm from. What I'm, you know, do you know what I mean? It was like that. Yeah. And the one thing that being known gives you is that you can drop that and just walk on and start. Yeah. And then, do you know what I mean? But, that's that's but wrong. I even though I feel like I go out now and um, and people know me a little bit, not a lot. I mean, I'm not famous by any stretch mm. of the imagination. That still doesn't mean that I don't feel I've got to give one hundred percent. You know, to earn their because. The danger is, and you see acts that have mm. sort of reached a certain level and they wander out without a care in the world and just don't try. And mm. I think the biggest insult you can give you an audience ever is to think, I don't need to try anymore. Oh. Uh, you know, so... But yeah, the, the, the fame thing is... Um, it's all a bit, you know... If, you, if you're in it from fame, it's a, it's a, you know... You're not, you're not going to get a lot of fulfilment. Fame happens. You know, I've seen it happen to some friends, uh, and some have dealt with it great and they've deserved it, and some have, you know, it's ruined them. Um, but you, you know, in a lot of ways, you can't make that happen, can you? You just do what you do. Oh no, uh, I'm the same. I'm the same. I'm not. That's not what drives me. Uh, it, I'm not sure if it ever did really. I mean, money's never driven me. I've never really been somebody who wants to earn big books. Uh, and uh, you know, like I say, it's just I just want to get in front of an audience. And make them laugh, and then afterwards hear that you know hear that you've made them happy. There's nothing nicer than some old woman coming up, and, and uh, you'll have had it. I've had it. People coming up saying this happened in my life. You know, my husband died two years ago. Or, this happened, or I've been going through a rough time. And thank you for making me laugh. You just you cannot. That is better than money. You know, just just you, you know, that's you know you could give somebody you know ten thousand pounds, but. To, to bring them relief from sadness and, and, and cheer them up and point them in a different direction is, you know, it's worth, you know, it, it, you can't put a price on that. And we, we are lucky. We get to do that. Uh, and the ones who don't realise 
that we get to do that. The ones who are doing it without realising that's the gift we've been given. That's the mm. chance that, you know, that we carry forward. The people who don't realise that and are doing it for money or fame or any other reason are missing out on the, the best part of this business. Um, it's still a business and there's still lots of crap that goes with it. And, it, you know, it's hard work and everything else at times. But... Um, you know that. I know you know that. Yeah, I can. Yeah, mm, I, mm. you can tell from talking to people. Um, you know, people who just have a you know a love of what they do, uh, and some get really famous and some don't. But so long as that's at the heart of why they're performing, I'm happy either way. Mm, absolutely, absolutely. Mm. We've got because this chucks us off um, after an hour. We've got about ten minutes left. So does anybody oh. in the Anyone in the chat got any questions they'd like to ask John? Uh, um, if you have get busy in the chat, I've got an eye on it now, so I'll be I'll be looking out for you. Who's got a question for our guest this evening? They're all You've already asked a question, and I've missed it in the stream. Ask it again, because it's not you're not being ignored. I've just missed you because it's gone past. You want to know anything, or you want to ask anybody anything? I had a lovely one of those. At, um, end of last end of well before the lockdown, it was the end of last year, and um, on a cruise ship, Oceania it was. Yeah. Uh, not not the ship, the line. There's a line and there's a ship called Oceania. This is the line, which is like an American older audience. And um, so, and, and I'll say good night to the guest. And this old guy, he was very frail. And he, and he said um, to me on the way out, oh, that's the best show I've seen. In, no, we always get this. This isn't like a brag, but best show I've seen in years. I haven't laughed in like that in years and years and years. And oh, thank you, sir. And he was like, you don't understand. I've been very ill and that's really cheered me up. And I'm like, oh, it's very kind. Genuine moment. Mm. And he went, and he passed away half an hour later. Yeah, bless him. He got back, he got back to his room, lay down, and, and he died. Yeah, that night, and um, that was a real moment of. You, you don't know, you don't know what what you're doing. Do you know what I had a thing happen, happen to me, and it's the, the, one of the nicest things that ever happened. I was doing a show, and it was a little church hall with about thirty people or something. Um, and there's some kids at the back, little um, little kids. There was two little girls. One one was about eight and the other one was about five and at the end of the show um i was sort of packing up and these two little girls came up and just sort of stood in front of me and watched as i was packing my stuff away and then the older little girl says um she'd like a hug about her little sister who's five so i'm thinking i'm oh, flipping it and i think i can't go i can't be hugging kids you know i, I don't know it's just you know you, you can't do that these days no. and i looked at the back and there was, uh, there was a woman at the back. She was just sort of watching. Who was obviously the, you know, looking after these two kids. And she was smiling. I thought, well, as long as she's watching, it's all right. So I give this little girl a hug. And she sort of didn't say anything. And then she turned around and ran back to this woman. And the, the girl went back. And then I carried on packing. And this woman came up to me. And she said, I'll, uh, I might fill up a bit here. Um, this woman came up to me. She said, that little girl's dad died about a year ago and she's never been able to speak to a man since it happened she's never spoken to men and she just seen me making people laugh and wanted to come up and have a hug <sighs> that's worth more than 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 i didn't get booked in <sighs> Uh, when do we get chucked off? Yeah. We've got ten minutes left. We got, we got, we got. Um, hang on a second. <laughs> Dry your eyes, mate. We've got um ten minutes to go. Um, <laughs> wow, wow, ten minutes to go. <laughs> we peaked too mm. early. Um, but those those things, was, um, don't just those, things, those things don't just happen to me, though. That, you know that, that I'm not special. Those things happen to lot. You know, all comics and and entertainers. Yeah, you know, we we're doing that. To people's lives, but, you know, we're but but what because I, I see the ones like the I don't know, not na na saying ones, but the other ones that are like all about the marketing and never written a joke mm. in their lives and that, but they miss this because they're too busy looking at their marketing and their brochure and selling the next show and selling the thing, mm. and they miss those human moments. They don't because they can't see them because when they're on stage or with people, they're in their heads thinking about the next scam, the next scam, the next marketing thing, yeah, you know yeah. And, and they miss these human, the human moments. You can see it even with the people that you don't meet. When you you can just know what you, you know when you've connected with somebody in the crowd, even if you never even mm. meet them after. What you know, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. There's um, 
Oh, mate. Sorry, that's really affected me. That, that's beautiful. Mm. It's a beautiful story, that. Yeah. Um, no, nice. So let's... Uh, you, never, you never know when that's going on. And sometimes you don't even hear about it. Sometimes yeah. something like that happen, and you, they won't even mention it to you. You know, you'll, you'll, have, you'll have deeply affected somebody i mean laughter and joy is just you know so special and um uh, and you you won't even know the audience will walk out and there'll be somebody who you've you know every gig i would imagine is happening you know mm. you, you know um yeah we're very lucky to be able to do this oh and that's one thing that this this has really underscored is that that we're really that the, the but when it starts again you know, when we're back doing it, I am not gonna, I am never gonna complain about a 3 a.m. taxi to the airport again. I am gonna kiss, I am gonna kiss every <laughs> stage I set foot on. I am gonna be at the back of the room shaking hands with every punter. I'm not gonna be giving it all those, oh yeah, I'm in the dressing room too. Oh, I'll be out the front, mate. Everyone's <laughs> getting a hug. I'm gonna be, do you know what I mean? I'm not gonna, not, not a second of this yeah. life will go by without me, every nerve blazing. Yeah, yeah. That's the no, plan, anyway. But... Yeah, cut, cut forward to next year, and it's like, God, <laughs> yeah. I can't believe I've got to do that shit all again. Yeah. If I see right. you at a convention and you're mourning about something, I'll remind you. It's a small thing, but I'm really, one of the things I'm mourning is the session convention, because I love that. Yeah, yeah. It, that's always a, little, that's always a little beacon of light in January, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. The session and Blackpool I used to quite enjoy as well. That, that was so, slightly harder to socialise at Blackpool, but... Um, yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm missing uh, I'm I'm missing those little get-togethers, and also just you know bumping into people on the road. You know, you go and do a gig, and you you're on the bill with somebody, or you meet somebody afterwards for a coffee, or you you know you you kip down with a mate somewhere. You know, all all of those little mm. sort of just just you know all these friends and acquaintances who. All you get now is a text and the odd phone call or something like this. But you know, there's there's no hug or you know real laughter. You know, when, when you when you you know you feel the laughter in your face, it, it's just oh. um. So yeah, I'm missing oh. all of it. But soon, very soon, soon, very soon. Yeah, it's coming. The return. Somebody asked about in the comments. Asked about your in. in I've got time for two more questions. Someone asked about your inspirations. Yeah. Um. I mean, now it's different to when I started. When I, when, when I started off, it was it was all of the, you know, the Markham and Wise, Les Dawson, um, all, all of those sort of 70s, uh, 80s stars, you know, Cannon and Ball, people like that. Those those people when I was starting off. I mean, now it's people like uh, Williamson. You know, I just, we, we all sort of, you know, mm. fawn. David Williamson, but he's he's just so natural with it, and you know, just so in tune with what's going on and with himself. Um, you know, and you know, I don't think he realizes. I, I hope he never does, because if he realizes, it might ruin him. I don't yeah, think. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I don't think he realizes how good he is. Um, but but he influences me a lot, and Matt King, and um, you know, I mean, Magic Wise in the UK, um, Paul Daniels and Wayne Dobson. Jeffrey Durham, you know, those were the those were the three that I used to watch a lot and you know, used to love what the all three of them did. Um uh, but I mean, like everybody, you know, get inspiration from music and films and you know, all of that all of that other stuff as well that's going on. Um here, there and everywhere really. But you know, I I don't I don't have one one person who's just like that, you know, that's who I want to be. Um, mm. there's, there's lots of bits of people that I go, I love that. Um, you know, Stephen Bogazzi, I love, I love watching Stephen Bogazzi work, you know, just uh, his character. I, I couldn't be Stephen Bogazzi, but I just love his character and the mm. stuff he, yeah, lots of people. And you, of course, mm. Danny Buckley. Oh, no, no, there's no, no, yeah. <laughs> no, I love your storytelling, Danny. I love, I love, I love your, you know, your sort of, your, your ability to, you know, sort of do that slight Shakespearean little waffly storytelling you do. It's, uh, uh, it's joyous. Um, you're, oh, you're, 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 no, you're, what I love most about you is when you go, you go slightly off piste, you know, you've got, you've got your roots and then, and then something, something will, you know, a little, 
it's like a little bauble on a Christmas tree. It'll just distract you. And it's, you know, and suddenly you, you go off that route and the whole audience know that, you know, they're seeing something um, slightly different. But we all know you're going to come back on track as well. So I, I love, I love watching you do that. And again, it's not something I would ever be able to do. But uh, so you see, I see lots of great stuff in lots of people, really. Oh, you're a very generous man, John. We've got time for one last question. We've only got uh, four minutes left now, I think. Which is from Katie Skipton, who would like to know what is your favourite song to play on the ukulele? Uh, that that changes. Um, that changes sort of regularly. I mean, it's a bit like tricks. Sort of my favourite tends oh. to be the one I'm learning and working on. I've just, I've just been I'm just sort of been learning a for this big buddy Holly thing. I've been learning a song that a very, not a very well known song by him called um, "That's My Desire." Just because I like, it's got some really nice little twiddly ukulele, well, guitar riffs, but I've sort of converted them to ukulele. Uh, so I've really enjoyed doing that one at the moment. Mm, beautiful. And that's all the questions we've got, I think. And we've got two minutes left. So is there anything else you'd like to say? Or, or will we cover the sing, bases? I'm going to sing a song. Pardon? Yes. And uh, you'll rec if you recognise it, join in. I will be joining in, <laughs> if I recognise it. Here we go. It's a classic you one. On a mountain in Virginia stands a lonesome pine. Just below is the cabin home of a little girl of mine. Her name is June, and very, very soon she'll belong to me. For I know she's waiting there for me, neath that lone pine tree. In the blue ridge mountains of Virginia, I feel of the lonesome pine in the pale, in the pale moon chime, uh -huh. our hearts entwine. Where she, where she carves her name, and I, I carve carved her. mine. Oh, June, like the mountain, like the mountain blue, I'm blue, like the pine. I am I'm lonesome for you. <laughs> In the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia, on the trail of the lonesome pine. What was great is the delay. It was like you were doing <laughs> on the trail, on the trail. <laughs> we must work on that. That was in the same room sometimes. We're closing the we're closing the session gala show with that. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. We'll wear bowler hats and you can do the high bit. Do the whole dance and the whole the yeah, voices yeah. and the high and the low and all the bits. Yeah, exactly. I think we, yeah, get in touch with get in touch with Gladwin. Say we want to do it. Yes, that means he'll do it. If I lie. ask, he won't do it. But if you ask, he'll do it. I will. <laughs> oh, he'll ask. I've got tapes. He'll ask. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, would you please? Show a massive stream of love hearts up the side. There you go. It's the equivalent of applause. You won't oh, see it on the playback. That all gets wiped. Mr. John Archer, everybody. Thank you very much for coming on, John. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No problem. Thank you. It's and come back, please. Come. We'll do it again, Any, yes? Anytime you want, I'll be here. Beautiful. And John so Archer, everybody. Take Cheers, care, Danny. Good night. Yeah, take care, fella. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, what a chat that was. Friends, thank you for coming by for tonight's live stream. We will be back. I have more guests lined up. Um, uh, all sorts of people are coming on. I've got, it's just getting the names and the order of it all sorted out because I'm always up in the air. But thank you for watching. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for joining us. Um, support this show by, just by spreading the word. Don't be afraid to share. It doesn't, this doesn't have to be our little secret, you know. You can share it in your stories and get people to come on in. Um, oh, some business. Very, very quickly, if you've got any interest in, in the meditation stuff I sometimes talk about, there's now a Facebook group for that. DM me. I'll send you the link. Come and join us. It's quite nice. Very light, very fun. Um, 
And that's all I've got to tell you. So I'll hopefully see, because the dump is going, the countdown. I will see you in the week. I plan on doing a solo stream and then having another guest lined up later in the week. So I shall see you. Take care, my friends. Be safe. Loads of love. And a massive thank you once again to John Archer. Thank you very much indeed, friends. Good night.